Have you ever felt the presence of someone when you were completely alone? Or perhaps you've had a premonition that came true? Welcome back, listeners, to another spine-chilling episode of Stories Philippines podcast, where we delve into the eerie and unsettling tales sent in by you, our listeners. I'm Alex, your host, and today we've got a collection of stories that will make you question the very fabric of reality and the blurred lines between the living and the otherworldly. Remember, all names and places in our stories have been changed to protect the privacy of those involved. Our first story comes from a listener in Lucina City who shared an experience about their aunt, who possessed an uncanny sixth sense. This aunt, whom we'll call Tita Marga, had a series of premonitions throughout her life. It was as if she had a direct line to the other side, sensing things before they happened. One of her most haunting premonitions involved her own brother, whom we'll name Tito Luis. Tita Marga had always been close to her brother Tito Luis. They grew up inseparable, supporting each other through thick and thin. One night, Tita Marga awoke in a cold sweat. She had dreamt of Tito Luis standing at the edge of a cliff, looking despondent and lost. The dream was so vivid that she could see every detail, the rustling leaves, the distant sound of the ocean waves crashing against the rocks, and the pale moon casting an eerie glow over the scene. The next morning, Tita Marga couldn't shake off the feeling of dread. She called Tito Luis to check on him, but there was no answer. Hours turned into days, and still, there was no word from Tito Luis. Then, on the third day, the police came with the devastating news. Tito Luis had been found at the bottom of a cliff, the very same one from Tita Marga's dream. Isn't it intriguing how some people can feel an impending doom, almost as if they're tuned into a different frequency? The family was shattered, but Tita Marga was inconsolable. She felt a heavy burden of guilt, believing that she should have done something to prevent the tragedy. Over time, the family came to see Tita Marga's premonition as both a gift and a curse. It made them wonder whether some people are more attuned to the spiritual realm and if such insights could ever change the course of fate. The concept of having a sixth sense or premonitions isn't unique to the Philippines. Throughout history, many cultures have tales of individuals who possess extraordinary abilities to foresee events. In ancient Rome, for example, augurs or soothsayers were believed to interpret the will of the gods by studying the flight patterns of birds and other omens. Similarly, in ancient China, oracles and diviners used various methods such as I Ching Book of Changes to predict the future. It makes you think, doesn't it? Are these abilities real or are they merely coincidences that we attribute to the supernatural? Moving on, we delve into another classic setting for ghost stories, schools. One listener from Angano shared a series of eerie encounters at their school, aptly named Angano Integrated School. One incident stood out among the rest, involving a mysterious photo taken inside a classroom. It was early morning, around 5 a.m., when a group of students decided to meet at the school to finish a project. The school was eerily quiet, with only the faint hum of the air conditioning system breaking the silence. One student, let's call him Carlo, had brought along an old digital camera to document the project. Carlo was an early riser and often carried his camera everywhere, hoping to capture candid moments of his friends. As they set up their materials in their homeroom, Carlo snapped a few pictures of the empty room, intending to create a before and after montage of their project. It wasn't until he reviewed the photos later that he noticed something peculiar. In one shot taken near the lockers, there were two faint figures that seemed to be children pressing against the lockers as if trying to peer inside them. It's like these spirits are captured in a moment they're forever trying to relive. Carlo showed the photo to his friends, and a chill ran down their spines. They had been the only ones in the room at that time, and the figures were not visible to the naked eye when the photo was taken. The word of the photo spread quickly through the school, and soon, everyone was talking about the locker ghost students began to avoid the locker area claiming they felt an unnerving presence whenever they walked by. 
Some even reported hearing the sound of faint giggles and whispers when no one else was around. The school administration tried to dismiss the claims as mass hysteria, but the students knew better. The fear was palpable, and everyone could feel that something was deeply wrong with that area. Despite the administration's attempts to quell the rumors, students continued to report strange sightings and feelings, cementing the locker area's reputation as the school's most haunted spot. Schools, especially older ones, often have a history of emotional events, happy, sad, and even tragic. It's believed that these intense emotions can leave a lingering energy in a place, which some people refer to as residual hauntings. In fact, there's a famous theory called the stone tape theory, which suggests that emotions and events can be recorded into the environment and replayed under certain conditions. Could it be that these locker ghosts are an example of this theory in action? Another listener from Vegan shared their experience with a haunted bathroom stall in their all-girls school, Vegan Girls Academy. Bathrooms have always been a hotspot for ghost stories, and this one is no exception. The listener, whom we'll call Anna, recalled the day she had an unsettling encounter in the school's oldest bathroom. Anna had always heard rumors about the eerie bathroom on the second floor, where the older students whispered about a tragic event that happened years ago. According to the legend, a nun had committed suicide in one of the stalls after suffering a mental breakdown. Anna, however, was skeptical and never really gave much thought to the stories. One day, after a particularly grueling exam, Anna decided to use the bathroom to freshen up before heading home. As she stood at the sink, washing her hands, she suddenly felt a cold breeze brush past her neck. She glanced around but saw no open windows or vents that could have caused the draft. Shaking off the unease, she continued washing her hands. Then, out of nowhere, she felt a sharp tug on her hair. It was as if someone had grabbed two fistfuls of her hair and yanked it with all their might. Anna let out a yelp and spun around, but the bathroom was empty. Her heart raced as she hurriedly gathered her belongings and ran out. She didn't look back. Anna later confided in a close friend about her experience, expecting skepticism or ridicule. Instead, her friend's face went pale. She revealed that she too had experienced something similar in that very same bathroom. Together, they did some digging and discovered that a student had indeed committed suicide in that stall many years ago. The revelation left them both shaken, and they vowed never to use that bathroom again. Isn't it fascinating how places can hold onto the energy of past events, especially tragic ones? This idea isn't exclusive to the Philippines. For instance, the infamous Amityville Horror House in the United States has been the subject of numerous books and films all revolving around the idea that a house can hold on to the traumatic events that occurred within its walls. Similarly, in Japan, the Aokigahara Forest, often referred to as the Suicide Forest, is believed to be haunted by the spirits of those who took their own lives there. Do you think these places are genuinely haunted, or could it be that our own fears and imaginations give life to these spirits? Next, we have a story from a listener in Bacolod City, who recounted a chilling encounter in their school's science lab. The listener, whom we'll call Miguel, had always been fascinated by the paranormal, but he never expected to experience something so unsettling firsthand. One evening, Miguel stayed late at school to finish a science project. The halls were deserted, and the only light came from the dim glow of the emergency lights. As he worked, he saw a figure standing by the lab's window out of the corner of his eye. Initially, Miguel thought it was another student, perhaps someone who had also stayed late to study. Miguel called out, hey, you're going to get in trouble if you stay here too late, but there was no response. The figure remained motionless, staring out the window. Miguel felt a chill run down his spine as he realized that something was off. He called out again, louder this time, but still, the figure didn't move. Summoning his courage, Miguel approached the window. As he got closer, he noticed that the figure was slightly transparent, and he could see the outlines of the trees outside through it. His heart pounded as he reached out to touch the figure, but his hand passed right through it. Imagine the sheer terror of realizing that what you thought was a person was actually a ghost. 
Miguel stumbled back, his mind racing. He grabbed his belongings and ran out of the lab, not stopping until he was safely outside the school gates. The next day, he shared his experience with his friends, but most of them were skeptical. However, a few believed him, and they too had heard stories about the lab being haunted. It turned out that years ago, a student had died in a tragic accident involving chemicals in that very same lab. Miguel's encounter added to the lore surrounding the school, and the science lab became another place that students avoided as much as possible. It's interesting to note that many ghost stories involve tragic deaths, especially in young people. This brings to mind the famous case of the Winchester Mystery House in California. Sarah Winchester, the widow of the inventor of the Winchester rifle, believed she was haunted by the spirits of those killed by her husband's invention. She built an elaborate, maze-like mansion to confuse the spirits, but many believe that the restless spirits are still trapped within the house's walls. Could it be that spirits are drawn to places of tragedy, forever trying to find peace? Or perhaps they are trapped, unable to move on from the scene of their demise? Some believe that spirits might linger in places where they felt strong emotions, whether it be joy, sorrow, or fear. Before we jump into the next story, I'd like to invite you to follow Stories Philippines podcast and share it with friends, family, and colleagues who are always looking for thrilling tales. Our episodes are full of suspense and excitement, sure to keep you on the edge of your seat. Sharing our podcast helps us grow and spreads the joy of storytelling to others who love a good thrill. Whether you're commuting, working out, or just relaxing at home, our stories make the perfect companion. Plus, if you or someone you know has a great story to share, we'd love to hear from you. Personal experiences and unique tales add so much to our community. You can reach us through the links in the show notes. We can't wait to hear from you and possibly feature your story in an upcoming episode. Thanks for being part of our storytelling journey. Now, let's get back to the show. Our next story is from a listener in Duma GT who shared an eerie experience involving their father's missing phone. The listener, whom we'll call Bi Ya, had recently lost her father, and the family was still in the throes of grief when strange things started happening. Bi Ya's father was a meticulous man, and he always kept his phone by his side. After his passing, the family couldn't find his phone anywhere. They searched the house from top to bottom, but to no avail. It was as if the phone had vanished into thin air. A few weeks later, Biya received a call from an unknown number. When she answered, there was only static on the other end. She dismissed it as a prank call and didn't think much of it. However, the calls continued each time from a different unknown number, and each time there was only static or faint, unintelligible whispers. One night, Biya decided to answer the call and listen more closely. Amid the static, she heard a voice that sounded eerily like her father's calling her name. Her blood ran cold, and she dropped the phone in shock. She tried to rationalize the experience, telling herself that it was just her mind playing tricks on her, a manifestation of her grief and longing for her father. But deep down, she couldn't shake the feeling that it was truly him. The calls persisted, and Bia's anxiety grew. She confided in her mother, who suggested they visit a local priest for guidance. The priest, Father Eduardo listened to their story and agreed to bless their home. During the blessing, Father Eduardo sensed a lingering presence and performed a ritual to cleanse the house of any negative energy. He explained that sometimes, spirits can get attached to objects or places familiar to them, and they might need help moving on. After the ritual, the calls stopped, and Biya felt a sense of peace for the first time since her father's passing. She couldn't explain the calls or why they had happened, but she took comfort in the thought that maybe, just maybe, it was her father's way of reaching out to say goodbye. Imagine the comfort and the fear intertwined in receiving a call from a loved one who has passed away. This concept isn't new and has been explored in various cultures and media. For instance, in the Victorian era, spiritualism was a popular movement where mediums claimed to communicate with the dead. People desperately seeking closure would often attend seances to hear from their departed loved ones. 
Do you think technology could act as a bridge between the living and the dead, allowing for such otherworldly communications? Could our electronic devices hold onto fragments of our consciousness, even after we're gone? Or are these experiences simply glitches in the system, misinterpreted by our grieving minds? Our final story comes from multiple listeners across different cities in the Philippines, all sharing sightings of a mysterious figure, a boy with burn skin. This shared experience has been reported in various schools, houses, and public places, making it one of the most perplexing and unsettling stories we've encountered. One listener from Davao, whom we'll call Jenny, recounted her sighting of the burnt boy. Jenny was walking home from school one evening when she noticed a figure standing under a street lamp. As she got closer, she realized it was a young boy with severely burnt skin, his face contorted in pain. Jenny felt a wave of sadness and fear wash over her. She wanted to help but was too scared to approach. The boy stared at her with hollow eyes and Jenny felt as if he was looking right into her soul. She quickly walked past him, but when she glanced back, the boy was gone. Shaken, Jenny rushed home and told her parents about the encounter. Her parents were concerned but tried to reassure her that it was probably just her imagination playing tricks on her in the fading light. However, similar sightings were reported by other listeners in different parts of the country. A listener from Cebu shared a story about seeing the burnt boy in their school's library late at night, hiding amongst the bookshelves. Another listener from Bagoyo recounted an encounter with the boy at a local park, sitting alone on a swing set, swaying gently in the breeze. Each sighting had the same haunting details, a young boy with burnt skin, staring with hollow eyes and disappearing without a trace. Could these sightings be connected to a common historical event? The consistency of these sightings led to speculation about the boy's identity. Some believed he was the spirit of a child who had died in a tragic fire, perhaps a victim of one of the many fires that have plagued the country throughout its history. Others thought he might be a manifestation of collective fear and trauma, a symbol of the pain and suffering that many Filipinos have endured. Whatever the case, the burnt boy remains an enigma, a haunting reminder of the unknown and the unresolved. It's worth noting that similar phenomena have been reported around the world. For instance, in England, there are tales of the black-eyed children, mysterious children with completely black eyes who appear on doorsteps and ask to be let inside. Like the burnt boy, these children are often associated with a deep sense of dread and fear. Do you think these sightings are a modern incarnation of ancient folklore, or could they be something more? Are these figures simply figments of our imagination, or do they represent something deeper, something that we cannot yet comprehend? As we come to the end of today's episode, I want to take a moment to reflect on the stories we've shared. These tales of the supernatural remind us that there are still many mysteries in the world that we may never fully understand. They challenge our perceptions of reality and make us question what lies beyond the veil of the everyday. They force us to confront the uncomfortable truth that we don't have all the answers, and that perhaps, some things are simply beyond our comprehension. But more importantly, these stories highlight the deep connections we share with our loved ones, our communities, and our past. Whether it's the premonition of a loved one's death, the lingering presence of a tragic event, or the unexplainable encounters with the otherworldly, these experiences shape who we are and how we see the world. They remind us that we are all connected, not just to each other, but to something larger than ourselves. It's fascinating how these stories often involve a combination of fear and comfort. Fear of the unknown, but also comfort in the possibility that our loved ones may still be with us in some form. These dual emotions are what make ghost stories so compelling and universally relatable. They tap into our deepest fears and hopes, reminding us of our own mortality and the enduring power of love. So listeners, as you go about your day, remember to keep an open mind and a compassionate heart. Embrace the unknown, cherish your connections, and never stop exploring the spaces between belief and skepticism. Who knows what you might find lurking there? Perhaps you'll discover a deeper understanding of yourself, the world around you, and the mysteries that lie beyond. We invite you to share your own stories with us. Whether it's a personal experience or a tale passed down through generations, your stories are what make this podcast special. 
you can submit your stories through the link in the show notes. And if you enjoyed this episode and want to support us, please check out the show notes for ways you can contribute financially. Your support helps us continue to bring you these intriguing and thought-provoking episodes. Until next time, keep it spooky.